In the last tutorial, I showed you how you can go to the Census Bureau webpage and download data that you can then bring into GIS to add additional variables um, to your map. So I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and bring that data in. You go to Add Data just like you'd be adding a, another layer of um, data. You'll navigate to where you saved that Census Bureau um, data and I called mine Colorado Send, but you don't actually want to add the Excel sheet. You want to go in and add the sheet inside of that file. Um, go ahead and add. And I'm going to right click and open it so we can see what it looks like. There's that join ID, that unique identifying number for each census tract. And then there's the census data for each tract that I want to bring in and add to, if I right click and open up the attribute table for my shape file, there's the data that already exists, but I want to be able to add this additional data to the end so I have additional variables. Now you'll notice that that join ID that I have in my census uh, data sheet looks a lot like this FIPS code. And in fact, each census tract will have a corresponding join ID uh, tract that it'll match up so that it knows where that data should be located. And that FIPS code is really a, a combination of a state identifying number. Colorado is 08. Um, Florida, I think, is 12, for example, and so on. Uh, a unique identifying number for each county within each state. And then they basically merge those along with a unique identifying number for tracks to come up with this larger FIPS code. So you can see the 08059, 08059, and so on. So we'll use FIPS to join with the join ID to merge that data. Now there is one little issue, and I'll show you how that pops up. So if you join census data to your shapefile, you always right click on your shapefile. A lot of times people will try to click on their uh, the sheet that they just brought in. That's not how you want to do it. You want to right click on your shapefile and go to Joins and Relates and click Join. And we want to join attributes from another table because we have data in two tables. And it says, choose the field in this layer that the join will be based on. And in fact, this will be the FIPS, the FIPS code in your shapefile. And we're going to try to match that with the join ID. But of course, we don't see it here. And that's the problem with the way the data is getting downloaded from the Census Bureau now. So what we can do is that right now, the FIPS code, if I open up the attribute table in my shapefile, this FIPS code is formatted as text. And I need my join ID is formatted as a number, so we need to create a new FIPS that's formatted as a number so we can match them up um, more easily. So to do that, I'm going to just do this drop down and add a field, which is essentially adding a column, and I'll call it FIPS2. I'm going to set it to double and hit OK. And you'll notice at the end here, it created a new column called FIPS2 and gave everyone a zero. I'm going to highlight that whole column by just left clicking there and then right clicking and field calculator and it says FIPS2 equals what? Well, FIPS2 actually should just equal FIPS. You can just double click on FIPS and it'll just replicate those. So it's calculating those records and there's my FIPS code essentially reproduced as a number. So now I can close that out. Now when I right click and go to joins and relates and join from another table using, and this time we're going to use FIPS2. It recognizes join ID is the sort of partner for that, and we'll hit OK. And now, right click and open up that attribute table. You'll notice that there's all of our data that's been joined. There's FIPS2, there's the corresponding join ID that's been paired up, and the new data. Okay. The one final thing you want to do, whenever you join census data. It's joined, but it's what I call a soft join. It can be easily displaced and you can lose that information if you do some other functions in GIS. So I always recommend that what I call baking the data. And essentially what you do is you just basically export this shapefile on itself. And in the process it hardens that census join. So I just right click on my shapefile, go to data and export data. And I'll just call it Den tracks B, B for bake, and add it in, and I'll get rid of all the old pieces, and I no longer even need that sheet of census data. And 
Again, there's all of my census data that I added in. So that's how you can add variables, add data using GIS.